Welcome back to the Rifter number 11. In this segment, we're going to talk about one of the articles in this book called Optional Supplemental Combat Rules. This is going to alter the normal combat rules to to your table. Maybe it makes it better. Maybe it makes your players like combat more or think combat is smoother. We're going to find out right now. All right. Uh, This is by Matthew Olfson. Olafsson, I like to say Olfsson, technically correct. All right, let's take a little gander here. There we go. Uh, Regular readers of the Rifter may have noticed that previous issues have not included many examples of optional rules, at least not those which replace or directly contradict the official rules in any of our games. However, many readers have commented they would like to see examples of house rules and other optional rules as alternative ways of resolving Jesus. things within the game. It's 25 combat. years later and people are still saying the same thing. I know people are saying the same thing because they didn't read the Rifter or left. Okay, no, we're, we're, we're fixing that right now. <laughs> we're fixing it now. Palladium Books has always encouraged game masters to change our rules in any way they like to suit the individual game or style of play. The article below is an example of one game master's house rules for range combat that work very well in his game and might find a place in yours. I want to stress these are optional, just an example of another way to handle range combat. And here we go. Though the Palladium game system covers hand-to-hand combat fairly well with its level progression charts, it leaves range combat unrefined. Now, to be fair, range combat, if you have a weapon proficiency, also has, you know, advancements that happen per level, but they're nowhere near as fleshed out or exciting as the hand-to-hand combat ones are. I felt that such a system would also be an ideal umbrella to further refine some of the debated game mechanics, such as bursts, ammo consumption, and the dreaded and loath minus 10 to dodge penalty. Why is that that loath? Because a lot of people, especially if you have a juicer, they don't like the idea that, you know, all, all, uh, uh, range combat dodges are at minus 10, but but he's already got like a plus 10, which makes it a normal dude. It's a bullet or a laser. Hey, 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 we're not, we're these, these are options. Yeah, but I'm just saying, but people who say that, the uh, the dreaded and loathed, screw those people. Okay, all right. (laughs) Awesome. It is no coincidence that there are four range combat levels of ability presented here. They are intended to complement the four main hand-to-hand styles, roughly sharing the same level of ability. Range combat rogue is intended to be equivalent of hand-to-hand basic. Range combat special forces is hand-to-hand martial arts. The parallel range forms designate the starting abilities of each character with the use of modern and high-tech range weapons. So, uh, you know, well, for for those of you who know Palladium, there is hand-to-hand basic, hand-to-hand expert, hand to hand martial arts or or assassin and then uh or commando and then uh and then the, this one also has a, a range combat sniper but all all of these have an equivalent range combat skill and it goes off to tell you exactly when you're going to get it how it works when it's appropriate stuff like that so let's let's go ahead and jump into that as you can see, uh, hand and basic is range rogue, hand and expert is range infantry, martial arts is special forces, and hand hand assassin is sniper. So OCCs and RCCs are assigned the range combat forms that correspond to their base hand-to-hand ability. For example, if you have an OCC or RCC that gives you as part of the core skills hand-to-hand expert then you would also get as part of your core skills, range combat, infantry. All right. So you would get that. And if you are able to buy a better, a better hand-to-hand combat, which you can sacrificing secondary skills or, or related skills, sorry. And you buy up from expert to martial arts, you can also sacrifice another related skill to buy up your range combat from infantry to special forces. But you must you must increase the hand-to-hand first. Right? Understood? Good. And let's move on to see exactly what they do. Range combat rogue. Let's get it right here. 
Those who have not had the benefit of any kind of formal training in the use of small arms use the rogue style. Many of those who use this style are self-taught and learn through observation, sometimes in the wrong places, like glorified movies, you know, holding your gun sideways, you know, it's not good, but you saw it in a movie, so you think it's cool. Uh, consequently, many wield their weapons improperly, like those who hold their shit. Okay. Or shoot from a hit because that's how, that's how John Wayne and, Ro and Rambo did it. So that's how I'm going to do it because of these shortcomings. It should be noted that skill development for those with rogue form is stunted. This form also represents those who did receive some formal training, but were rushed and couldn't focus because they had other fields of study. And it increases very much like the hand to hand version would at each level, you get a special ability or an addition, uh, either to hit or damage or whatever. In this one, level one, when you do a burst fire, you get damage multiple. A short burst is times two, medium burst times three, long burst is times four. This this replaces the weapon proficiency bonuses you would get. Uh, level two, nothing. Level three, impose dodge penalty. Now, I'm kind of against this. I don't like the fact that I'm good takes away from your ability to be good. I don't like that overall. I understand giving a flat out bonus to hit is not what you're is not what the author of this was looking for. He was looking for that you're you are adept enough at shooting at a moving target to anticipate a little bit how they're going to dodge. And so they dodge less effectively. I get it. Yeah, but I mean, if when you're thinking die rolls, it's the same thing. So to hit would have been more. I know, I know, but accurate. I get it too. But it's it is what it is. All right. If you don't like it, you can change it. That's fine. Uh, level four plus one to hit across you know across the board you know for aimed burst or wild even wild. Uh, five is cold cock. I'm going to move on for after cold cock. But cold cock is actually you know pistol whipping somebody hitting them with the butt of your rifle, whatever. It does extra damage because you're practiced at doing it. Then we get range combat infantry. Uh, burst style multiple, same thing, times two, times three, times four. At level two, you get your cold cock because uh, an infantry soldier is, is also trained not just to use their weapon in range combat, but to use, use their weapon in close combat. That's why they used to have, you know, uh, the little, what do you call it, at the end of the rifles? Um, the, the knife the bayonet, what, I, bayonet? bayonet thank you god i blanked on it thank you i lost the word uh that's why they had bayonets at the end of their rifles when you get to close combat you use your you use your your weapon your long range weapon as a close wing weapon as well uh there's your imposed dodge penalty again bonus to hit burst damage multiples get higher short burst is still two but now burst is four and long burst is six and you have rapid reload Rapid reload is a John Wick reload where you don't spend an action reloading your weapon. It's it's a free action. One time per round. It's a free action to reload your weapon. Cool. Then we have uh, range combat special forces. Again, in the beginning, it's all the same. Uh, it gets uh, You get more imposed dodge penalties instead of minus two. Now it's an additional minus two, so it's minus four. And you critically hit on any natural roll of 18, 19, or 20 with your weapon. Which is pretty cool. I like that one. Uh, at level 11, you can do an aimed short burst. Normally, this is not possible. Short burst has its own thing. It's considered not aimed. You 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 get your you get a different set of bonuses. For an aim short burst, you you get to, you get uh, the bonuses as if you were it was a regular aim shot. And pinning fire, kind of like suppressing fire, only it keeps people from moving. Moving causes them automatic damage because they're moving into bullets. I think it's kind of neat. I mean, yeah, it, I, it may I, not I got I got game. some quibbles with it, but it's about a game. Yeah, and it's about it. So I don't. I'd test them out. I'd test them out to see if I like them first. But uh, if somebody would say, hey, I'm going to incorporate these rules into my game, I'd probably be like, okay. Then we have range combat sniper. Uh, this one at level two, not only do you get cold cock, but you get leading. This is plus one to hit a moving target. Now, hitting a moving target is harder, especially in Palladium. You get, you get substantial minuses. In fact, uh, a lot of times you don't get any bonuses at all. You lose your bonuses. But this one, you get a bonus plus one because you've learned as a sniper to lead your target's movement. 
So you're mitigating some of the advantage he has by moving. I like that one. Uh, normal burst stuff, uh, more imposed dodge penalties. Uh, you get the aim shot. Double critical hit on a roll of a natural 20. That's times four damage. You get more leading bonuses, additional plus two. That uh, you're, up to plus, uh, you're up to plus three now to hit a moving target. Roll of an eight or better required to hit on a called shot instead of a 12. That's a big one for a sniper. Because not only are you a long range, which gives you gives you more minuses, but your called shot is now only an eight. That's awesome. Because by the time you're level 12, an eight is nothing. A bonus of eight, now everyone's got that at level 12 to hit. So you're going to hit. You're going to hit your called shot. You are an experienced sniper. Now, this goes the explanation of terms are to get pinning fire. We'll do, we'll do pinning fire. When using pinning fire, the character is saturating an area with a controlled spray of shots. Anyone in that area not protected by cover is automatically hit. But a dodge is still possible. You can still dodge, but it's as if a roll happened and you were hit. And I've got someone mowing the lawn behind me. I'm going to get by this in a second and close that window. Uh, the number of targets that can be hit cannot exceed half the number of shots in the burst. So if if you are bursting, say, you know, half a clip and, you, and your, your clip is 20, you're bursting 10 shots, you can only saturate the area for five people. After after five people get hit, you ran out of bullets and the rest of them get to go. But it makes people stay in cover because they know if they hit, if they leave cover, they're going to be hit by a bullet. I like that. I mean, is it too hyper realistic? Some some would say yes, some would say no. I don't know. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, speed load basically turns an improvised version of rapid reload. Could reload and attack in a single round. Rapid reload allows the character to change magazines and attack in the same melee action. It's basically a, a fast action or a free action. You can still attack. Uh, walking aim. This is this is one that the that the infantry and the uh, and the special forces one gets characters with this ability may may walk at a fast pace one quarter max speed and still fire aim shots with uh with full bonuses and no wild shooting penalties you, i you incorporated are, that into my game too yes you are trained enough at this point in your weapon and in advancing in a field of fire to where you you can you can half you can half jog and still have effective fire combat that's great uh, and lastly, the definition of standard rate of fire needs to be well defined. I recommend the standard rate of fire in modern weapons be determined. The oops, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Be determined thusly. Let's read this. Uh, weapon revolver. Each depression of the trigger uses a single melee action. No bursts are possible with a single action revolvers. Pump weapons like shotguns and the TX-5 fall into this single action category for rate of fire purposes. A short burst is possible with a double action revolver, but consumes the weapon's entire payload. Automatic pistol. The weapon can fire a single aim shot or burst. If the weapon's payload is eight rounds or less, all ammunition is consumed in the short burst. This is Okay, I don't. I don't need to continue this. This this is a, an alteration of what uh, single action, short and long, and entire clip bursts actually do to become more in line with how the gun actually works, or how a person would actually use such a thing. And uh, shooting wild needs a revision as well. Apparently so. Uh, the wild shooting rules need a revision as well. I'd recommend the following changes. Making the act of shooting wild only uses a single action instead of two, unless a long burst is used because long burst takes, you know, more actions. The character shooting wild should be allowed to use single shots and short bursts instead of being forced to use medium and long burst exclusively. I agree with that. And lastly, in place of a standardized times two damage multiple, regardless of burst size, impose a wild shooting penalty of minus one to the damage multiple of short and medium and minus two to long. For example, a medium burst that normally does a times three multiple would be reduced to a times two and a long burst that's times eight would be reduced to a times six. If you are shooting wild, because shooting wild is you're just going, ah, and of course you're going to be less effective. 
and rather than taking everything away from your ability to hit, you're putting so many bullets down range, you're going to hit somebody. But it's no it's not going to be anywhere near accurate. It's going to hit, you know, arms and and feet and canteens and all that stuff. So you're taking away total damage. I get and remember that. those multiples that he's talking about there are based on your weapon proficiency that you have off of these optional rules. So don't go exactly. looking for those they're, in the rift book right now. You won't find them. Yeah, they're based off of, of your of your ranged attack of uh, uh proficiency. So, you know, if you are if you're higher level, you're going to get higher damage multipliers for your burst fires. So this this takes away some of that because you're firing without looking, basically. I mean, you're looking, but you're not really looking. But that that is all. The, the range combat thing is what a lot of people say they had a problem with. But melee combat, less so, according to the author. Now, I, I can agree with him that that uh, uh, melee combat is a lot more fleshed out than range combat in the normal rules. You get a lot more cool stuff you can do in uh, in close quarters combat than you can do in range combat. This gives you cooler stuff you can do in range combat as well. So if it's just for that, I'm cool with that. I'm good with this. Now, do I want to change this, the burst fire, stuff like that? You know what? That's a, that's a give or take thing. I don't know. I think the, these rules, I'm trying to run them through my head while you're talking. And unfortunately, that's, there's a lot of changes there. Um, yeah. But it seems like if you're using the rules, you should use all of them because they seem like they all are meant to go together. Like that damage multiple, I wouldn't want to use that in a normal after the bomb rifts game. But using these, uh, um, the full gamut of these rules, that right, changes right. my tone a little bit on that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, the 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 author of this, you know, made made both of these things. The the changes to the, with the what burst fire does and all that stuff. So he made it to work in his game. So it's made to be worked together, but you can, you can make it work if you just want to do changes to burst fire, or you just want to do changes to standard rate of fire, or you just want to do the, the, uh, changes to the, uh, uh, the weapon proficiencies to, to make it more like the hand to hand proficiencies. You, you can do that. It may take a little finagling, but you can do it. Yeah, well, I'm, I think I'm, I would do. I'm, I'm a fan of these of these ranged range combat uh range combat proficiency type things yep. i'm a fan of it i like it i always thought that it was weird that melee combat got so much more of flavor and options than the range combat did but now that's fixed i like that yeah i think the only thing that's missing are range categories <laughs> yeah, Short, yeah medium, only, but I, I i will in the next segment it does cover that in the question, oh, the next in the Q and A set. Okay, in the Q and A, it does cover that because that is a common question. Like, you know, is it is it always four or less misses? No, not for range combat. And we're going to get into that next segment. But what do we have for uh, the just chat one right now? Just one. But everybody was silent because we still have the same viewers, but everybody was silent. So there we go. That's fine. That's Boom. Fine. Um, We'd like to see ranged combat infantry incorporate some bonuses around teamwork with similarly similarly trained teammates. That's a game changer, in my opinion. That makes sense. That does make sense. And if you wanted to change that, I completely understand. Uh, you can in, instead of the imposed dodge penalty, or or if you don't like the burst damage multiplier, you can eliminate that, and then put in uh, team some some kind of team tactics. Like if, if you are in a group with three or more people with range combat infantry or higher, you get a, a team bonus to certain things. If you want to do that in your game, that's fine. And that makes perfect sense because that, that, that is the, that is the power of, of, a of a trained infantry soldier, trained and experienced infantry soldier who is backed up by other trained and experienced infantry soldiers. That is, that is shock and awe time. You know, you, you can really make some stuff happen. So I understand that. Yeah. So I disagree. But really? th there's a caveat to why I disagree. Okay. I think it's just a name. It's range combat infantry. It just represents that you have a bit more training with the firearm. Doesn't necessarily, it, there shouldn't be an implication there that it means, oh, now you're infantry trained with infantry tactics. Well, this it should doesn't be, have to not. Hear me out. Okay. This should be OCC related. 
it should be something added to the OCC. If you are a man at arms, that should come with the man at arms. Uh, then yes, it does. No, it does be, because remember, uh, you can only have uh, range combat infantry if you have if if you're if you got hand to hand combat expert. Right. No, I I get all that. And all the men at arms come with man sure hand combat expert. But there are also other OCCs, RCCs that come with hand to hand expert as well that don't necessarily fit in that criteria so i'd say it's 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 it should come with the occ not with the weapon proficiency itself that's the only way but other than that i do agree that yes if you are a, a headhunter a borg and a, and uh like see i don't know if Merc. i would give it to the glitter boy yeah. because the glitter boy is meant no, to pilot this. Glitter boy, but mercenary definitely yeah you know? mercenary something that absolutely uh, uh, uh coalition soldiers definitely yeah so uh Anywho, boom. Yeah, I, I generally uh, generally like those. I think the that write up was good, and I, I as somebody who u- likes to use the stuff out of the arms and equipment guide, SDC worlds. That's why. Sorry, um, content modern contemporary weapons. That's what I meant. I think that for the rifts, folks, that uh, those set of rules are something that people should try. Even if you end up not liking them, you not you don't like fine. them, but uh, fine. I but it I in in my opinion, just using the range combat uh, levels mm-hmm. of of training gives gives the same flavor as the hand-to-hand combat levels of training have, have sure. always had yep. but yeah that's it in our next segment we are going to go over uh some question and answers some something that uh happens uh to uh to palladium people uh a lot kevin and wayne and and everyone at uh at palladium get these questions and so they decided you know what we're just going to make a q a and answer some of these questions that everyone seems to be asking we're going to go over that next time don't miss it. Oh, and nope. I bet you 25 years, well, 24, but 25 years later, you have these same questions. Let's find out.